this lecture, we're going to learn about something called Euler circuits. Let me begin by taking a little problem involving parking meters. This is a little map of a downtown area. It shows several blocks. And this is kind of a little town. It just has these few blocks where there are some parking meters. The idea, of course, with parking meters is to control how long somebody can park. And if you want to park in this downtown area, you need, of course, to put money into the parking meter. And if you're caught parking there without having put the money in, then you're going to get uh, a fine. Of course, this means that there has to be somebody that goes around and um, checks these parking meters. And we want to think about that person, the parking control officer, or if you like, the meter maid. Her name, of course, is Rita. And what she wants to do is she wants to drive in in her vehicle. She comes from somewhere outside the downtown area. She parks it. Of course, she can park wherever she wants. But to check the parking meters, she can't drive around. She has to get out of the vehicle, and she has to walk around the sidewalks checking every meter to make sure that if there's somebody parked there, then there's money and the time has not run out. So she needs to walk around and check all the parking meters. And then, of course, she wants to end up at the place she started so that she can drive off in her little vehicle. Of course, she wants to avoid unnecessary walking. It would be, it seems redundant of her to, to walk down the same stretch of sidewalk twice so as to check the parking meters again. She doesn't need to do that every couple of minutes, but only a few times each day she's going to do this job. All right, so now what we'd like to do is we'd like to model this using a graph. And let me tell you what we want to use for the vertices. For the vertices, we want to use the intersections, okay? So right on top of the drawing that we have here, right on top of the map, I'm going to draw the vertices that we want, and I'm going to draw them positioned, well, right where they are. So here I'm showing again those 12 vertices, this time without the map underneath. Remember that the vertices represent intersections. And what should edges be? Well, it's tempting to say, well, they should be the stretches of road that she needs to check, but that's not quite what you want to say because she really can't check these parking meters by walking down the yellow line in the middle of the street and trying to look at the parking meters on the two sidewalks. So really we should think that these edges that we want to draw are stretches of sidewalk. Only sidewalks that have parking meters, however, she doesn't really have to walk down a sidewalk if there are no parking meters on it. So now here's my challenge to you. Stop right now and make your own little drawing. So draw these 12 vertices as I have just drawn them and then draw in the appropriate edges. And after you've done that, then come back here and take a look and see if you've drawn the same thing that I've drawn. Okay? That's not what I wanted to do because I forgot to go to the full screen. Okay. Well, here again, we're looking at the same 12 vertices, but now I'm showing you the edges that should be drawn. Remember that the vertices represent intersections, and so there were 12 of those. And the edges are showing the sidewalks. Notice in many cases that we've drawn two edges because there are stretches of street which have parking meters on both sides that need to be checked. So for example, right here, I've drawn a double edge. And the reason for that is back here, this was a stretch of the street that had parking meters on both sides. So in many cases, I want to draw those double edges. However, if you take a look at this stretch of street, you'll see there's something funny. There are no parking meters over here on this side. Maybe it's City Hall or something like that, and you're not allowed to park there. 
And so when we go and we look at the graph, we notice that here we've drawn only a single edge right here, not a double edge. Okay, so this is the graph that represents her problem. Now, what does she want to do, given that we now have a graph? Well, we can say what she wants to do, using our graph theoretic terminology. What she would like to do is she would like to find a path with two properties. Okay? The first is that it begins and ends at the same vertex. Remember that she wants to drive to some particular intersection and stop and then get out and walk. And at the end, she wants to drive away. So her path has to begin and end at the same vertex. Also, she needs to check every parking meter, and that means that she needs to use every edge in this graph. Now, she wants to do this as efficiently as she can, so if possible, what she'd like to do is she'd like to use every edge exactly once. So to summarize, Rita would like to find a path with two properties. It begins and ends at the same vertex, and it uses every edge exactly once. Now, there's a name for this in graph theory. In a graph, a path that begins and ends at the same vertex is called a circuit, C-I-R-C-U-I-T. And then, a circuit that uses every edge exactly once is called an Euler circuit. Now, you'll notice that it's spelled with a capital E. It's E-U-L-E-R. That's because it's the name of a person who's shown over there on the right, a very important person in the history of mathematics who wrote an enormous amount. Some of it is still actually being published, despite the fact that he died in 1783. The name is pronounced, however, Euler, like the football or the hockey team. So what we're looking for for Rita is an Euler circuit. And you've thought about this problem already because you did this in recitation. In recitation, you were asked to decide whether certain graphs had Euler circuits. For example, let's look at the two graphs that are shown here. And do these graphs have Euler circuits? Well, the answer in one case is yes. For the one on the left, there is an Euler circuit. For the one on the right, there is not an Euler circuit. For the one on the left, to convince yourself it you, that it has an Euler circuit, just find one. There is one there, and it's very easy to find an Euler circuit. In fact, there's lots of them. If I ask two different people to do this problem, almost certainly they will find two different Euler circuits. The one on the right, however, doesn't have any Euler circuits at all. And why is that? Okay, let's look at this. Well, I claim that you can see this already just by looking at a single vertex, the vertex which is down at lower right, okay? So what I'm telling you is this is all you need to see in this picture to know that this graph can't have an Euler circuit. Well, why not? Let's suppose that we wanted to find an Euler circuit in this graph. Let's suppose that we tried starting at that vertex at lower right, okay? So here would be the first vertex, and of course then the first edge we would have to use would be this one here. We would be leaving that vertex and going to another. Well, then we would go around and use other edges, and we would follow some kind of a, a path. But eventually, since this is supposed to be a circuit, what we need to do is we need to come back to the vertex at lower right, and it's impossible to do that because this edge has already been used. We're not allowed to use it again. All right, so that shows that we can't find an Euler circuit if we start at that vertex, but maybe we start somewhere else. Let's suppose we start here. Okay, well, so we start choosing edges, putting them together to make a path. But at some point, we have to use this edge right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in on this edge this way this time and go to this vertex. But we can't stop there, right? This is supposed to be a circuit, so we need to leave again, and there's no edge available, so again, it's impossible. Now, if you think about the argument for a moment, you'll see that the only thing that I was using, really, was the fact that this is a vertex of degree one, right? So I've given you a general argument that if a graph has a vertex of degree one, then it can't have an Euler circuit. And actually, you can make a similar argument that applies to a vertex of degree 3. So here, let's consider any one of these. Let's say this one up here. 
here is a vertex of degree 3, and I claim, because there's a vertex of degree 3, that this graph can't have an order circuit. Well, it's just an elaboration of the previous argument. Suppose you would start at this vertex in making an order circuit. Well, you'd have to use an edge, let's say this one. And of course, at some later time, you'd have to come back to that vertex since you haven't used all the edges yet. You might say, come in on this edge and then leave on this edge. But now you see the problem is you've used up all the edges and you can never get back to where you started. And in fact, that argument applies no matter what choices I made because I would use one edge initially to leave and then when I come back, I would use two edges. And that would get me up to the three. A similar argument can be applied if I start somewhere else. It'll just show that I would need to use two edges and then two edges again and two edges again. Well, I can't do that, right? I have an odd number of edges. In fact, as you think about this argument again, you realize that it doesn't really matter whether the degree is one or three. The only important thing is that it has a vertex of odd degree. If there is a vertex of odd degree, then your graph cannot have an Euler circuit. So this is a quite general fact. If a graph has a vertex of odd degree, then it can't have an Euler circuit. Equivalently, to say it sort of backwards, if a graph has an Euler circuit, then every vertex has even degree. Now this is a very simple thing to check about a graph. If I present you with a graph, you can quickly figure out what are the degrees of the vertices, and if any one of those degrees is odd, then it can't have an Euler circuit. If all of the degrees are even, it seems like maybe you could, but in fact, we haven't made that argument yet, so let's think about that. So what we're asking is, what about the opposite implication? If all the vertices of a graph are of even degree, must it have an Euler circuit? And the answer to that is, well, no, not quite, because I haven't said connected. So here's an example. Look over here. And think of this as a single graph, just one graph. It happens to have two components. It's a disconnected graph. Now, all the degrees are even, but clearly this doesn't have an Euler circuit, because if you start, say, at this vertex here and have a path, you'll never use any of the edges over in this component. And vice versa, if you start at a vertex in this component, you'll never use the edges over here. However, what is true is if you have a connected graph, and every vertex has even degree, then it does have an Euler circuit. So it turns out for connected graphs, this criterion that we've just learned applies in both directions. It's called Euler's criterion, and it says that a connected graph has an Euler circuit if and only if every vertex has even degree. Finally, let's ask about Rita. Remember, we had a little problem that motivated us to think about this question. We wanted to find an order circuit so that Rita could do her job, and it turns out, well, she can't do it the way she wants to. And the reason for that is, well, order's criterion. Look at this vertex here, and look at this vertex here. This one has degree 3, and this one, if you count, has degree seven. Those are odd numbers, and therefore there is no Euler circuit. Now, of course, she can't just call up the boss and say, oh, well, too bad. I can't do the job. I'm just going to stay home. Please send my paycheck. What this means, of course, is that she'll have to walk the same stretch of sidewalk more than once. Now, if you look at all the other vertices in this graph, you'll see that they have even degree. These are the only two vertices of odd degree. So it's sort of obvious how she can solve the problem. It's as if we would just give ourselves one more edge like this, and that would make this degree go up to 8, and this degree would then be 4 instead of 3. And there is an Euler circuit. Of course, one of the edges in it is really a repetition of the previous edge. So this is the stretch of sidewalk that she has to repeat.